All right, y'all, so I'm not proud of a lot of things that I done did in prison. And this is one of my very unproudest moments that I've done. Now, in hindsight, yes, I was wrong. But at the same time, listen, prison is prison and it is what it is, especially when you got bad charges. So this, this dude came in there, right? And he was like, 45, 46 years old. I couldn't tell was he Mexican or like Honduran. Whatever he was, he just looked it crazy. And I know he wasn't white or black, but he was he had, he was Latino. You know what I'm saying? But this is the guy in the thumbnail. I found I found this mugshot. But I was locked up with this dude, and you know he come to tell us this story that. So he said that. His wife end up having, they end up adopting a teenager. So I guess they was in foster care. They was foster care parents, whatever. And he said he was a mechanic and usually they would get like kids under the age of 10. Like they was emergency foster care people, whatever. So he said normally he'd be at, he'll be away from the house for, you know, most of the day, most of the time. So he only would see the kids when he get home or whatever, but he said he really didn't interact with them. So he said when one day he come home and there's a 16 year old girl that was put in emergency foster care and I guess she had to come to their house or whatever. So he said when he seen her, he looking at her like, like who who are you? And she was like, um, I I was placed here from foster care, or whatever. And then the mama came in, and she you know he she told her like, yeah, this is one of our foster kids. She'll be here for a couple of days, or whatever. So he said, okay, cool. You know, there there was no issue. So he said, now I, I know y'all know where this is going. So he go on to tell us that the girl ended up st they couldn't find no placement for her, so she ended up staying there for two months. So he said that in them two months what he would do he'd be like getting out the shower or something and she'd walk in and he'd be like hey uh what, what are you doing and she'd like leave out but leave out slowly but steady looking at him and he said like he'd be like laying on the couch sleep or something and she'd like lay next to him or something and he'd wake up and tell her like move or something like that this is what he said so he basically told us like she kept coming on to him and you know one of one thing that I now let me let me paint the scene where we at right here y'all in lock up. So we in Oakland County and in Oakland County you got one bed, one two, you got eight man cells like an eight man, so there's they got, what is it? Two right here, two, 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 four, six, eight. So you got two bunk beds over here on the right, two bunk beds over here on the left right there. You got a bathroom and a little shower right there, like dead smack in the back of the cell in the middle. So I'm sleeping. Okay, so I sleep on the right side at the bottom, right? Dude sleeping in back of me also so his bunk is next to mine's but so basically what i'm trying to okay so my head will be next to his feet if that make any sense and there's a space right there right and then there's you know there's a somebody over that person and over me and then on the other side the same thing so that's the dynamics of this cell so you know he's telling us like what happened so I asked him, like, so you ain't ever tell your wife, like, you know, this girl, the 16-year-old girl is is coming on to you and doing stuff? And he was like, no, I didn't, I ain't really think it was a big deal or whatever. So we was like, okay. So he finished the story. He tell us, like, one day, long story short, yeah, this is going to be a real short story, y'all. Long story short, the girl end up, well, he say he drinks. He drink Budweiser. 
So he said that he's he's drinking his Budweiser and he he finished a whole twelve pack. You know these dudes always come up when they out. They always come up saying that they was under the influence, right? So he say, yeah, I, I just got to finish finishing a twelve pack and you know I was drunk and you know I she got on the couch with me and I thought it was my wife. Yeah, he used that. I thought it was my wife. I thought it was my wife, and we end up messing around. And then when I realized that it wasn't my wife, you know, I, I, I freaked out and told her, like, man, what are you doing? Right there, y'all, is where, you know, that, I'm like, yeah, okay, whatever, man. Because I don't care how drunk I am. I know my wife. I know if my wife get come on, man, we, uh, anyway. So he says that. They messing after after they get there messing around and stuff. He tell her like, "Yo, this not right, and what are you doing and all this and that." After he done finished the deed, so he say the girl like, "Okay, well, um, my bad, whatever." So he say he don't say nothing. Next thing, the next thing you know, he say he go to work the next day, and the police come up there and they arrest him for the hard R word, right? So they at the shop. And they put him under arrest for you know the assault on this on this on a on a uh, foster kid or whatever. So now he in here with us, and he telling us the story, right? So at this time, y'all, I was I was in there. I was in there for a gun, right? But they PFI'd it, pending further investigation. So. I was in there on a the gun, and but I knew I was getting out in like a week. And I, I told my girl, "Don't even pay my bond. Don't don't pay my bond because I know they're gonna PFI it and give me a reconnaissance bond." So I told, so I said, "You know, I, I stay here for the two weeks. You know, I ain't tripping." So I'm listening to the story, and I'm like, you know, everybody else listening, and. You know, most of these guys is about to go home. So they ain't really trying to push no issue. You know what I mean? Like, they ain't really tripping off what dude talking about. But I have a problem with it. Why do I got a problem with it? Because I used to work with juveniles. I used to work with, you know, girls that was trafficked. You know what I mean? Girls that was pimped out by their parents. Um, and that just don't sit right with me. It it just don't sit right with me at all. And, you know, I, I seen the effects of little girls being violated and they be messed up mentally when they get older. I, I done seen these effects, right? So as he telling me this, my BS radar is just going, just going insane. So... You know, normally I don't really push an issue like that, especially when I'm in the county or whatever. But I just it just wasn't sitting it wasn't sitting right with me. So I'm like, so hold up, hold up. I said, let's 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 get to the beer talk. I said, so do you usually drink like that? Drink heavy like that? He like, yeah, sometimes I do. You know, I might you know bust down a six pack and you know I just chill or whatever. I said, so I'm pretty sure you've been drunk before, right? He was like, yeah. I said, so you, so you mean to tell me you did not know that 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 was not your wife and that was the girl, right? He was like, no, I, I thought it was my wife. I said, okay. I said, so why you ain't never tell your wife that you know this girl was coming on to you and now you being accused of this? You know what I'm saying? Like at least your wife would have a heads up because another thing, what he said was that the girl was telling. You know, the detectives and stuff that he been pressing on her since she got there. And she was afraid to tell, you know, anybody because he said that he was going to basically take her life. So that's what that, that's that, too. So I'm listening to all of this and I'm like, look, for I, it, my BS radar was just just out the roof. Um, Let me put a little side note right quick, real quick side note. Normally, like I said, I don't really get in people business when they in there for a bad charge 
unless they confess it or it's just you know, because all these type of guys would say, oh, it's a conspiracy theory, right? But like 98% of the time, they really did it. And the way that he's talking, I know he did it because come on, man. So this girl been coming on to you for all these months. And now that you supposedly got drunk, when you usually always drunk anyway, you couldn't tell this with your wife. So I'm grilling him at this point, like, nah, man, something don't seem right. So he like, no, I'm for real, man. I, uh, I, I didn't know it was my wife. So I said, okay, so what well, y'all was hugging, kissing, and y'all, man, he was like, well, well, I mean, we went all the way, and yeah, and I, she could be pregnant. So, so that lets me know right there that he finished. So I'm like, okay, so, oh, you must have realized it wasn't your wife after you got done, huh? He was like, no, you trying to make it seem like I, like, like I just knew it was. I'm like, come on, man. This girl, man, I said, this girl been coming on to you all this time. And now you, yeah, all right. All right, whatever, man. So he like, he like, boy, you think I'm lying? I said, yeah, you is lying, man. He like, man, I'm not lying, man. I'm not lying. I put that on my life, man. I put that on God. I said, don't put that on God, man, because you know, come on, man. So that was that. Later on that night, now, like I said, remember, y'all, he's telling any and everybody that will listen, right? And a lot of these guys, before they get they before they get their head cracked and lock up, they they like to they like to try to paint their own narrative, right? They like to try to so so called get ahead of the damage, you know, damage control, and try to put their own narrative out there. And this is what he would do. So we end up getting this white dude up in there and he instantly get to telling him like, yeah, man, I'm in here because, you know, this girl done lied on me and, and all this and that. And he going through the story again. And I, I just set up. I'm like, hey, man, shut the F up, man. He like, who you talking to? I said, I'm talking to you. He like, man, man, leave me alone, man, before I tell the guards. I said, tell the guards what? That you were Tomo? And he, he, he was like, man, that, that ain't that ain't funny, man. I said, I'm not laughing. So he he like, man, man, I ain't, man, man, I, I ain't, man, worry about yourself, man. Why don't you just worry about yourself? I said, no, because I'm tired of you keep on telling that story, man. That's disgusting, man. Like, you, you, you know you did it. He was like, man, I didn't do it, man. I ain't do it. So the white guy was like, man, listen, I don't want to be involved. I'm just in here. Oh, and I'm 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 here for child support, man. I don't I don't want to get involved with what I got going on. So the guy tell me like, hey man, listen, I I don't know if you know or not, but you know girls lie on guys all the time. I said, listen, I get that, but the way that you telling that story, the way that you telling it, it ain't making no sense, man. And I'm and I cry, I'm I'm getting tired of you telling the story, man. So he like, well, okay, well, you ain't got to listen. I said, I do got to listen because you right here by me. So I get up. I said, you know what, man? You going to have to get out this cell, dog. So now listen, we, let me see. I'm going to say this was around maybe, uh, I'm going to say 10 o'clock, about 10 o'clock at night. So I tell him, like, yo, you're going to have to get up out the cell, dog. And he was like, no, man, man, keep your hand to yourself, man. Keep your hand to yourself. I said, I ain't say I'm going to touch you. He like, he was like, man, listen, man, just, man, that, I'm just going to worry about me. I ain't going to say nothing else to nobody else. I ain't, I ain't going to say nothing else. I said, all right, man, I don't want to hear this story no more. He's like, okay, okay, cool. So then I get back in my bed, right? Now, this is where this story is going to go into the Twilight Zone. Or well, I like to call it the Terra Dome, right? So it it got to be maybe about one o'clock in the morning. I had to pee, so I get up. Everybody sleep, and for some reason, and, and like I said, y'all, like I said in the beginning, man, I'm not proud of. A lot of things that I done did while locked up. It's a lot of things that, you know, I was dead wrong for doing. But in this case, you know, I can't stand to hear about girls and boys being violated. I, I just can't. 
So, and this is me rationalize of what I did next. So I stand up. He's laying like he the way he's laying, he's on his back and he knocked out his mouth wide open and everything. So what I do, I end up pulling down my trousers, whipped out, and I just start peeing on them. I I I just start peeing on them. All up in his face, all in his eyes, all in my just just start peeing on him. And he got up like, oh, 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 oh. He got the, he was choking. He was coughing. Hey, what are you doing? What are you, oh, God. Oh, he got the gagging, throwing up. I just peed on him. And he hurried up and moved past me, got up on the bar. Guards, help me. Help. Help me. He just peed on me. He just peed on me. Help me. Help. He just got his peed on me. And dudes waking up, they like, hey, what's going on? I just lay back down, right? So a guard come through, like, what the heck going on? He just peed on me. He peed on me when I was asleep. So the guard coming in, he like, man, hey, Dante, what, what's going on? I said, I, I was sleepwalking. And he was like, you were sleepwalking? I said, yeah, I thought, I, 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 my bad. And he was like, come on, man, you, uh, hey, come on, dude. You, you can't be doing that. I, I said, I, I'm for real. I, I was sleepwalking. You know, I was sleepwalking. I had to pee. And I and my bad. I'm sorry. Right? But I wasn't sleepwalking. I knew exactly what I was doing. So he, he like, he like, no, uh, he got to go. You, you got to get him out of here. You got you to gotta, you gotta go. Oh, no. Man, hell no, man. He just peed on me, man. Right? So the girl like, hey, listen, man. Hey, come on. Come on out. Come on out. So dude just cut me down. <laughs> Dude just coming down in tears, just yelling, man, he peed on me, man. And I and I, and I got to get in trouble, man. He peed on me. So the guard give me a mop bucket and a mop, right? And I just, you know, I had to clean up the area right there. And, hey, I guess justice was served, right? Hey, if y'all can appreciate some beautiful artwork, especially resin artwork, look no further. My girl Shay... She is out cold with this resin work. She can make stuff for your man cave. She can make stuff for your woman cave. Whatever the occasion is, she got you. Matter of fact, this is her Instagram page right here. Y'all go check her out. I'm going to leave her link in the comment section. Go check her out. If you want me to promote your business, your products, or your social media channels, make sure you contact me at the number that y'all see on the screen. Also, this is the new official cash app for the Dante Show Network. If you want to be a part of the growth of the Dante Show Network, make sure you lean on the cash app. I don't care if you donate a dollar or $10,000. It is all appreciated. Also, I have three other channels that you may or may not ever heard of. I'm going to have the link to them three channels pinned at the top of the comment section. As well as my contact number and the link to the official cash app. Also, if you want to get access to my exclusive videos, make sure you become a member. I'm going to have the link to the members only videos pinned at the top of the comment section. Okay, y'all, we need to raise $10,000 for the next project, okay? If you want to donate to the Dante Show Network, make sure y'all bless the cash app or put something in the PayPal. I know y'all wondering, like, Dante, what type of shirt you got on? Listen, my homeboy, Sovi Spochi, man, he got a merch store that I copped this from, man. When I say this shirt feels so good on my body, Listen, it's about 85 degrees in this room that I'm in right now in my studio. And this shirt is so breathable, it make it, it feel real good, y'all. So make sure y'all check out the link in the comment section also to his store. Go check out his merch. This is the new cash app right here. Do not send no more money to the Dante Show with the three W's. This is the one right here. So y'all make sure y'all lock this one in. Listen. YouTube is playing military mind games. They not sending out my notifications. So I need for y'all to text this number that y'all see on the screen so Dante can give y'all a personal text to let y'all know when I drop a new video or when I go live. 